This video is about the ropes and rigging I did on three trebuchets in Texas. Three, two, and we launched fireballs. Five. So what I did to start was to make the slings for the projectiles. And I'm using the same method I did in my earlier video on swing making. These are netted pouch manila rope slings. So I've cut the rope into two different pieces. This is 3 8 diameter manila bought from Home Depot. And I marked the size of the pouch with constrictor knots and then opened up the splice and I'm starting to splice it into the other rope there. Just with an eye splice, it goes in at a nice angle. And so now I open up the other side and I'm splicing it in there to the other side. As you can see, it's helpful to have the projectiles on hand to see how the swing's sizing up. Now I believe I did four complete tucks and then I tapered out the strands over about two more tucks. And then once you're all done there, you can clean up the ends and take off your constrictor knots. Now I made the length of the pouch about twice the width of the pouch and the width was a little bit more than the width of the projectile. Actually it might might have been pretty much exactly the width of the projectile because the depth of the netting makes it so it stays in there. So now that I've got that little eye pouch, I start weaving in a slightly smaller diameter line. I'm weaving in quarter inch manila here. And I, I splice the ends into those eye splices and I try to follow the original splice points. This was pretty difficult actually because one quarter inch line is not very much smaller than three eighths. So it would be helpful if you're working with larger main rope or smaller netting rope. There, there should be a bigger difference between your two sizings here. As you can see, I resorted to trying to fit the one quarter inch into the splicing with a screwdriver. And I was getting pretty frustrated here. So for that first pass, you just do a series of turns around one of the outer legs of the pouch. And then again, I'm kind of sizing it up and measuring it. Now I think I accounted about one and a half times the length of the pouch for these strands here. That's including the splice. And I accounted about eight inches of rope for the splice there. And the pouch is about 16 inches long and 8 inches wide. And this was for throwing cantaloupes and pineapples. I might have just been using an arm span's length of rope here. Better to have too much than too little. And here you can see again, I'm struggling to splice that in because the quarter inch is so large. So what I did for the remaining three cords in the net is I actually just tied them off with a clove hitch and a stopper knot. And then I start tying my sheet bends in the netting. And so you take one strand and you work your way around one side of the pouch, tying sheet bends onto the loops that you put in previously. And I'm using the screwdriver here to help kind of seat the sheet bends so they don't collapse into overhand knots. Now at the edges of the pouch, uh, on the extremities, I'm trying to tie the netting as tightly as possible. And it's towards the center of the pouch that I'm giving the knots a little more slack 
to open up the pouch. We had a little conversation there about the pouch sizing. The, so the clove hitches that I started and ended these inner strands with, they actually worked out uh, pretty well because you can use them to tighten up the pouch when it expands during the first shooting. And here I'm getting ready to do the final strand, which will crisscross between the both sides and tie the net together. So for this final strand, you need to account a lot of length, about twice as much as you've been using. So I think I used two arm spans of one quarter inch line here. And you're just going back and forth and tying sheet bends. And it's a good idea to keep all the sheet bends on one side of the pouch. I was worried initially that the pouches would stretch and become a little bit too deep and not let the cantaloupes or pineapples out. But this was just a matter of shrinking in the pouch. And I actually only had to do that on one of the slings. And I could do that using the clove hitches. Again here, you can see that towards the center of the pouch, I'm leaving more slack so that it can open up, but on the ends, I'm making sure to tie it really tight so that the projectile doesn't get stuck in there. And of course, once you're done with your net, you gotta play with it and swing it around a couple times and see if it works. Now that the net's done, I'm moving on to the ends of the swing and I'm tying my top line hitches. I have a video on this. They're great adjustable knots that allow you to shorten or lengthen the swing pretty much at will. And I've slipped on a metal ring. And then once the knot's completed, I'm whipping the end of the rope with a sailmaker whipping. And I've taken to doing an extra half hitch on the end of my top line hitches. Here I'm finishing up the other sailmaker's whipping on the bottom of the pouch. The fixed end of the pouch has a little quick link so you can attach it to the arm. And the other hand has a metal ring that will slip off the pin. And once your splicing is done and your net is made and your knots are tied, it's time to whip over the splicing. This is just a good idea. It really completes the look of the pouch and gives the splice some protection. Now I tried to improvise a whipping tool a serving tool kind of out of a bolt and it didn't work all that well so I just resorted to doing this by hand which is not an ideal way to do this. They actually make serving mallets and I need to get one. I also need to get myself a Swedish fid which might have helped for feeding that one quarter inch line into the splice. Here's the completed pouch. This is the table I'm working on with all the ropes and projectiles. Now I'm working with the 3 8 manila here for throwing cantaloupes and I'm doing all the whippings and servings in jute twine. Now I also attached the manila haul ropes to the winch mechanisms on these trebuchets. The winch axles are one inch diameter steel, and I was really worried that the rope wasn't going to take to them well, so we ground kind of a flat spot in the steel, and I unspliced a length of rope and laid it across the bar, 
and I started hitching it on with a series of constrictor knots that I pulled tight with a hammer. And then once I had that hitched on, I did a whipping at either end and in the middle. And this actually worked really well. The rope took to that flat spot, and between the constrictor knots and the whipping, it was held on there. And it also helps that the rope in the winch system isn't really under tension until after about the first four or five turns. And so that allows it to really seat itself on top of the tail there. So once I'm done whipping it up, I wind it onto the drum because the rope is now permanently attached to the axle there. And I'm doing a little constrictor knot on the end of that uh, hitch there with the carabiner. And then you can take out the drum and do the next one. As you can see, I unlaid the strands so it would lay flat better onto the axle there. And here's all the winch drums ready for transport. So at the end of the winch rope there, I did a uh, crown knot directly into the carabiner that hooks on the Flemish horse. So this is just a straight splice. It's very clean and utilitarian and strong. And I did the same thing on the ring that goes on the end of the arm for the trigger. And these are the triggers. I eye spliced a loop of rope right into the trigger there. Here we are on the field, and I'm starting to lash the Flemish horse onto the first trebuchet arm. Now, I started the horse about one and a half times up from the axle as the length of the short arm. So the length of the short arm of the trebuchet here is about two feet, and I started the Flemish horse three feet above the axle, just to make sure that we got a little bit of advantage in the leverage department. Here's how the machine winches down for the first time. And for the Flemish horse and the winch rope there, I used half inch diameter manila with a working load rating of 300 pounds. These trebuchets were designed to use about 500 pounds in counterweight. And then I had a little bit of extra work to do on the tip of the arm there to attach the sling and the trigger. Trebuchet is locked and loaded. Got a cantaloupe that's almost three pounds. All the manila rigging's in place. Flemish horse wedges and the lashing on the Flemish horse. All we got to do is back off the windlass, take off the safety rope, and pull the trigger. So I guess that's a procedure. Are we doing this again? Uh, yeah, I want to set the pin. I want to pull the pin back. Here's what the rope looks like as it winds around the drum. You can see the whipping for attaching the tail. Now the rope winds its way all the way to the other side of the drum, and then you have to push it back upon itself. So it winds back upon itself. This helps because it ends up in about the middle, so it's not pulling the throwing arm to one side. Here's the swing after throwing the first fireball. Now on the second two machines, I ran out of manila rope, and the local tractor supply only had a uh, nylon. So I chose safety over the sisal they offer because sisal has a low working load. Hey. Hey. Three, two, one, loose. 
Yeah. Woo! Nice. God dang. Yeah, Always a good idea to make sure your ropes are up to strength. And uh, working with Manila, safety comes first. Now on the Flemish horse with the manure rope, we noticed that the pulley didn't travel across quite as well, and it traveled a lot smoother on the nylon. Here after this shot, the swing kind of had some gasoline on it, and I could just beat it out, and it actually held up really well. What we did is we dumped the swings in a bucket of water before each flaming shot. We got them nice and wet, and a little bit of the lines too, not just the pouch. So as long as you dump your swing in water, you can throw flaming stuff. Now here the Flemish horse had kind of moved a bit, so we hammered it back down the arm and put some what more you wedges think? You in put it, more wedges in or hold it good? in place. And we definitely know, drive as many in as when you it was get tighter, in. Uh, everything worked better and, better and the yeah. bully ran better across the horse. So make sure your Flemish horse line is as tight as possible. Here I'm using just contractor shims designed for doors. Now, unfortunately, the winch ropes didn't hold up quite so well when the rope started winding around itself on the axle towards the end of the haul down. It really pounds. abraded the layer beneath it, and that winch line uh, really deteriorated quite quickly. And another downside of working with Manila is it doesn't last as long under hard conditions. As you can see, the swings work great, and they held up even launching fireballs. Here's the last shot of the event. 